on Britain's streets, a battle is raging. Don't touch me, son. Well, I already just did, didn't yeah, I? What, don't is, what are you going to do about it? Over 11 million of us rent. I wouldn't put anybody in this situation. Oh, seriously, they're not living in this, are they? So why should I live like this? But thousands fall victim to rogue landlords. There's just water cascading through here. This is a dirt trap. On the other side, Ooh. there are two million private landlords and counting. I want my house back. I don't give a toss. I want to drag her out of the flat. This is my... Life. I'll never rent again. Too much hassle. But many face financial ruin at the hands of tenants from hell. He hasn't had his rent for ages. He's had so what? what are you going to pay me the money? There's a scam going on here, Donnie. In this series, Come on, we follow the heroes who take slum landlords down. Paying rent to live in a decent property. There's so many things wrong, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Somebody touches that, you get electrocuted. Not acceptable. And the experts whose job it is to evict nightmare tenants. Do not push me. Do not push me. With London bursting at the seams, the competition to find affordable housing is fierce. And for Britain's poorest, the hunt to find a home can force them into unsafe and overcrowded HMOs, houses in multiple occupation. It's 7 a.m. and Harrow Council Housing Officer Ozzy Albayrak is on a mission. Right, let's start from here then. She's on an early morning raid with the police, hunting down properties which could be dangerously overcrowded and unsafe. Ozzy spots a building that she wants to take a closer look at. so early in the morning. I'm from Harrow yeah, Council. Yeah, yeah. I just want to literally know how many people live here. This one? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Her. You don't know? Yes, six people. How many? Six of them. Six? Yeah. If the six people the tenant claims are living there aren't related and are sharing facilities, then the landlord could be found guilty of running an illegal HMO. Ozzy needs to establish who's collecting the rent. You know you pay rent for this house, rent. Who you pay your rent to? Okay. Who? Who you pay your rent to? Uh. Struggling with the language barrier, Ozzy decides she needs to inspect the property. I look inside, I oh, look. Come here, okay. Come here. What she finds is a cause for concern. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six beds. With six bunk beds squeezed into two rooms, Ozzy fears that as many as 12 people could be living here. This is very overcrowded. The windows are blocked in case of fire. Hi, I'm coming from Harrow Council, my dear. Some of the occupants are still in bed. Ozzy needs to establish if they're subtenants or whether they pay rent directly to the landlord. Okay. How many people live here? Can you tell me how many people live here? This is three people. This is one, two, three. Three. Look, your windows are not openable, no smoke alarms. Who is your landlord? Who do you pay your rent to? Your rent? Rent? Yeah. For landlord, money? For oh, this? I don't know, sorry. This is now, I don't know. <laughs> Worried by the number of beds and potentially dangerous living conditions, Ozzy knows she will need to investigate further. OK. We need to come back to this property because I definitely think this is a HMO. OK, thank you. We need to come back here. There's okay. plenty of bunk beds, as you can see. It's definitely HMO. We need to come back here, definitely. Ozzy needs to establish who is responsible for the overcrowding and squalid living conditions and force the landlord to put it right.
For a landlord with a difficult tenant, getting them out is a long and tricky process that can cost thousands. But when it comes to eviction, there's no room for mistakes, as one East London landlord found out to his cost. Self-employed baker Nick Shad let out his East London property four years ago. For the first few years, his tenant Abdelghani Hamadouchi paid on time. But eight months ago, Nick received some worrying news. I got a phone call from one of the neighbours saying that um, he's changed the front door locks. I smelt a rat straight away, and then the month after, he stopped paying his rent. He decided to pay his tenant a visit to find out why he'd stopped paying, but made a shocking discovery. I went round there to ask him where the rent was, and uh, the front door wasn't locked, so uh, I just opened the front door and there was beds everywhere. We suddenly realised that there's up to eight men living in the house. It looks like his tenant had sublet the property. Immediate reaction is you just want to throw them all out. Two weeks ago, Nick went to court and won a possession order. Today is the day Abdelghani and other tenants are due to leave the property, and Nick is heading there to find out whether they've obeyed the order. I'm hoping he's gone, and uh, we're going to try and get possession back of the house. As he nears his property, he spots his tenant, Abdelghani, on the street. There he is now. That's him there. That's him. That was him walking around there. This morning, Nick's meeting Paul Champlina from Landlord Action. You right, Nick? Hello, Paul. How you doing? Who's helping him get his house back. You all right? I've got the possession order. If we get an indication they haven't left, mm. which most probably they haven't, mm. I'm going to have a word with them. I'm going to serve a copy of the possession order, yeah. albeit on the tenant, which we know is not there because you just saw him walk out. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to try and speak to the subtenants and say they shouldn't be there. And we'll see how we get on. Nick doesn't believe that Abdel Ghani has been living at the property for a while, but he's hoping the subtenants have also left. This one on the left, blue door. Blue door. But as they approach, there are telltale signs that someone may still be around. Well, the windows are open. Yeah. Get him out of bed. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Looking out. They're looking out. Hello. Front door. Hello? Hello? Coming up. There's a setup of beds, mattresses, bunk beds. It's clearly there's something going on. Oz is demanding answers in Harrow. I need to speak to Mr. Talaji. He could have unlimited funds. It's not a joke. Eight beds. There's eight mattresses here. There's a nasty surprise in store for Nick. Oh, my good God. I live here, yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely fuming. Absolute joke. And a landlord's goodwill comes back to haunt her. They've made me homeless. Sorry. Landlord Nick Shad suspects his tenant Abdel Ghani has been subletting his East London property to a number of people. Hello. Hello, it's the landlord. Having won a possession order, he's checking to see whether they've gone. Hello. Anyone here? Hello. Back door's wide open. Maybe it's been vacated. Anyone here? If there were subtenants living here, they've left. I think this is good news, mate. Yeah, I think so as well. I think they've uh, they've done a runner. Oh, I mean, they're it. not living here, are they? No, no, they've, they've gone. They've... There's no clothes. There's no clothes here. But there's plenty of evidence that at least half a dozen people have been living here. I'm seeing beds everywhere still. Is there loads of beds out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, look. Oh, my 
God. Bed settees, armchairs. Two, hold on, one, two, three mattresses there. Yeah. Four, five, six, seven. Eight beds. Eight. There was eight. There's eight mattresses here. Eight mattresses. If the house has been full of subtenants, it's hardly surprising it's in such poor condition. Okay, so the flooring's all gone. It's all leaked everywhere. Well, I give him this garden. It was absolutely immaculate. It's just really overgrown. It's trashed. Oh, look at all the drains collapsed. Look. Oh my God. Oh my good God. Just pigs. Despite the property's condition, at least Nick has it back in his hands. I'm really pleased for you that we've got. Yeah, possession. so am I. Let's get cracking. Let's get these locks changed. Take care, again. Brilliant. Cheers, bye. Bye, mate. Nick changes the locks so he can secure the property. We've got vacant possession straight away, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a result. An hour later, two men arrive. One of them is Nick's tenant, Abdel Ghani. I live here, yeah, yeah. Where's, uh, where's Nick? Anyway, where's the dental? He wants to get back in. Oh, he's changed the lock. OK. He's changed it. Obviously, he came and changed the lock. Unable to open the door, the men leave. Two hours later, Nick gets a phone call. I'm absolutely fuming. I mean, it's just a joke, absolute joke. Believing that Abdul Ghani had left, Nick may have inadvertently broken the law by changing the locks before bailiffs have officially evicted him. He is still claiming he lives in the property. I'm not impressed. The uh, council have told him to stay put. Uh, we've spoke to our lawyer and he said straight away that, yes, he can stay put until the sheriffs come in. Nick has been advised by Paul that an illegal eviction could scupper the case, so he has no option but to hand over the new keys. I'm pissed off big time. The house looks unlived in, didn't it, really? But according to him, it's not. Just mental. Absolutely mental. I'll leave the key like that. I'm sure you'll find it. There's nothing worth nicking in there, that's for sure. They think they've won today, but they haven't. We'll get him out eventually. He can't stay there forever. That's it, we'll wait for bailiffs now. I'll see you on the eviction. Mother of one, Hamdi Abdul Qadir, is returning to the flat she once called home. Ten months ago, in an act of generosity, she let some acquaintances stay in her two bedroom flat for free, giving them a chance to get back on their feet while she was away studying. The family have long outstayed their welcome. Hello, Hussein. And nearly a year on, Hamdi is making one final attempt to get them to leave. I just want to speak to him, just to see whether maybe I can reason with him, to see that we don't have to go through court and through all that hustle. Maybe he will just move out of my house. This guy, originally, I started helping him last year, January, because he was homeless with his wife, and his wife was pregnant at that time, and they had a six, seven-year-old son. Initially, it was only for one month that I offered to help. After one month, he asked for another month. I did extend it freely, but in March, he was meant to move out, and he refused. And since, I've been in this battle, getting him out of my house. Heavily pregnant herself, Hamdi demanded her flat back. Not only did they refuse to leave, but they locked her out of her own home. I was shocked that he just changed the locks. I could not believe that someone 
can do that. And he just left me homeless. When you've got someone that depends on you, it's not that easy. You know, I feel like I've let him down. With nowhere else to go, Hamdi has been forced to live at her mum's house. <laughs> There's no space for her husband, who's living somewhere else, so she shares this small room with her baby. I'm in this room because I've been kicked out by people that I was helping temporarily. Now, they've made me homeless, and I'm staying in this room. <laughs> I don't know if, if I've got a word for it, how I feel. You know, I just feel gutted. Hamdi desperately needs her home back. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. There's a ray of hope. She's going to court in a few weeks to try and win back possession. Sorry. It's two weeks since Harrow Council housing officer Ozzy Albayrak found a three-bedroom flat that was dangerously overcrowded. Ozzy is on her way back to the property, looking for some answers. Today, we're going to see if we can get some more information from the lady. We just want to ensure that the tenants are safe. So. We'll try and gain access today again to find out more. Ozzy wants to find out if the landlord is responsible for filling the house with vulnerable tenants or themselves a victim of a subletting scam. Hello. How are you? Me again. Sorry? Me from Harrow Council? No, no, no. Good. It's OK. Me look inside. OK? okay? Thank you. She's arriving unannounced, hoping to catch the tenants off guard. Ozzy needs to establish who is living here and who is paying rent to who. Hello. Hi. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six beds. What's your name? Where's your ID? Lovely, thank you. Are you working at the moment? No working. So how do you look after yourself? Yeah, I know too much English, sorry. No English. How, how do you pay rent for this house? How do you pay? You don't know. OK. The tenant claims there are only six people living in the property, but with enough beds for 12 people, Ozzy doesn't buy it. Although she's saying there's not many people in this room, obviously we can't trust that. There's a setup of beds, mattresses, bunk beds, it's clearly there's something going on. Same set out here. We've got one, two, three, four. Hello. How long have you been in this house? No. Who do you pay your rent to? Sorry, I'm not even... We're just worried about your safety. Look, your windows are not openable, no smoke alarms. Who is your landlord? English is me. No good. Hello, one minute. Who is this? Yeah, sorry. Who is this? English, English. The tenant calls an English-speaking friend to translate. Can you ask uh, the lady who does she pay her rent to? And also, I need to see the tenancy agreement. OK, OK, OK. okay. Yeah? Ozzy hopes the tenancy agreement can shed light on who the main tenant is. Oh, gosh. <sighs> While she can't yet be sure who's responsible for the overcrowding, Ozzy's certain someone's making good money. If, let's say, for example, if these guys are paying, I don't know, minimum 60 to 70 pounds per week, and you can, um, you can multiply that by 12 people, you could see how much money they're making. You fine? A lady saying that this person who's on the tenancy agreement has gone to China. So, what might be happening is that this guy might have left her in charge in his absence. How long you been here? Me? Mm hmm. Me. You don't know. You don't know. Ozzy's not having much luck getting information out of the tenant, 
but the tenancy agreement does confirm the name of the landlord, Ibrahim Talasik. I'm just now planning to go in front of the building where we have the registered landlord at number 79, so we'll have a look. If we can find him, we'll try our luck. Ah, 79. Okay. Coming from Higher Council, yeah. I need to speak to Mr Talaji. Oh, okay. Ozzy needs to track Ibrahim down. She needs to find out if he's aware that up to 12 people are living in his property. Help for the house. House? Yeah, upstairs. He's not here. He can come up half, half an hour. <laughs> Undeterred, Ozzy waits for the landlord to return. Is he back? Not yet. Eventually, the landlord's nephew, Itan, arrives to speak with her. The problem is, you know, upstairs, okay. there's too many people living in there. In here? Yeah. There's so many bunk beds, it's overcrowded, and there's no smoke alarm. OK. So, basically, if he wants, he can be fined £5,000 straight oh, no. because he doesn't have smoke alarm, no. OK? That's one. And then, because he doesn't have a licence and there's too many people, he could have unlimited fines in the court. It's not a joke. So. How many crimes I'll have a word? Have okay. A word. You give him my number. I've told them that the property is overcrowded, that the property is not safe, and it has to be licensed. Whether the landlord was aware or not, if he wants to carry on letting the property, he must now apply for a license, reduce the number of occupants, and make the property safe. If he doesn't comply, he will be facing prosecution. Hamdi Abdul Qadir is at the end of her tether. Ten months ago, she allowed a family to stay in her flat rent free, and they've refused to move out. Today, she's heading to court, hoping to have them evicted. I was shocked. Someone that I was helping can actually do this to me. It's caused me a lot of pain. You know, put me in this situation where me and my baby are just homeless. I'm settled. The case is far from clear cut. Because she originally invited the couple in and there's no tenancy agreement, they could argue they have a legal right to be there. It's very important for me, the decision to go my way, so I can get my house back. The court hearing takes less than an hour. Yes, I got it. I got the possession order. After 14 days, hopefully I'll get my flat back. I'm very happy. Oh, relief, I think is the word, mainly. Oh, yeah. Her tenants have been given 14 days to get out of her house. Hamdi and her son should be reunited with her husband and back in their flat within a month. Very happy. Very happy. Weeks later, there's a dramatic turn of events. Hamdi's tenants appeal and overturn the possession order. When I saw that the defendant has filed a defence form and that the case has been put aside, my heart nearly dropped on the floor, honestly. And I started crying. They claim they have a verbal tenancy agreement and pay Hamdi in cash. The court has given them time to provide evidence proving they're legitimate tenants. I just feel angry. I feel really angry. And I feel like going to my house and just changing the locks. It's my house. The law is not fair. It's not fair. Hamdi denies she received any rent from her guests, 
But now there's a real risk. She will have to start the eviction process again, leaving her bedding down with her baby in her mum's house for six more months. Still to come... Nick Shad tries to get his property back for a second time. You've got your van, haven't you? This is wrong. The landlord in Harrow faces the music. You need to make sure your tenants are safe and they're not subletting the property again because they could die here. And Hamdi reaches breaking point. Like two years. One year and a half is enough. ago, Nick Shad mistakenly changed the locks on his rental property, thinking his tenant had left. We thought the uh, tenant had gone. It looked unlived in completely and utterly. But uh, it turns out it wasn't. He was still living there, and the neighbours confirmed that as well. So I had to return the new front door key back to him, uh, regrettedly. But today, Nick is meeting High Court sheriffs who were set to evict Abdel Ghani Hamadouchi and this time, it will be final. Another three weeks rent I've lost, um, obviously, because you're not getting paid. So, uh, yeah, it just goes on and on and on. A bit sad, really. Paul Champlina from Landlord Action has been helping him with the case. It didn't look like it had been lived in, but we had to give him the benefit of the doubt, and the tenant basically was given the key and he went back into the property. This is D-Day today, so, you know, one, if the tenant's there and he's in bed, we'll get him out of bed, he can't break back in or go back into the property, because if he does, that's illegal. We, we can get him arrested, so uh, today is the day. Right, Nick. You right, this is Scott. Hello, Nick. Scott. Yeah, nice he's our, he's our yeah. high court... Um... OK, so yeah. what's happening then? What's the uh, procedure here? Well, let's just give him a knock, yeah, and let's get this over. And oh, come on in. Have you got your, have you got your... Nick suspects that as well as Abdel Ghani, there may be as many as eight sub-tenants in the property. I want them out. That's his van. That's his van. All right, she's in. Get him out of bed. Come down. Coming down now. And his time, isn't he? Hello there. Hi. Yeah. My name's Scott. I'm a enforcement agent. Yep. So I've been taking back possession of his property this morning. This family? Yep. Did you take a few belongings for me and no, make your not. way out, please, yeah? Yeah, can I have just the paper? Well, I'll give you the paperwork once you leave, okay? No problem. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, Nick and Paul head inside. It looks like the subtenants have left. Yes, yeah, so he's clearly living by himself here now, isn't he, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because all the beds were stacked up there last time we come. He's been laughing down the phone at me at some times. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Taking yeah. the piss? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he knew he could. There's no other tenants here, though, is there? No, no. I have one bottle with me. Yeah, you know, they've been there for, for a long time. Gutless. You should have been here the first time I come. There was people sleeping in the hallways. Okay, we're going to give you a, a rip, which mm. we got from the High Court, which you yeah, can yeah. take to the council. No, it's fine, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, I, I don't suppose there's any, you know, with regard to the rent, is there a, some sort of payment plan that we could do? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't really know what's going to happen. To be honest with you. You've got no money? No, at the moment, no. Just telling you, if you've got any goods here, you've got seven days okay. to come and collect them. That's fine, yeah. That's telling you you've been evicted this morning, OK? All right, thank you. All right, lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Good, good, good. It's got a few bits and pieces on the shelves in here. You've got your van, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can take your stuff. Eight months on and eight grand down, Nick finally has his house back. He, he didn't even apologise to you. I mean, he owes you all that money. 
He didn't even apologise to no, no. I mean, that's, yeah, it's wrong. The tenant may have gone, but he's forgotten a few things. Left his computer. Oh. You thought he'd uh, remembered that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, he's left a cat here. That was him on the phone. Uh, can we look after the cat for seven days? Right. I said, what about your laptop? Yeah. And he said, uh, oh, uh, he said, yeah, I'll come and collect the cat and the rest of my stuff within seven days. Yeah. Even though I've got my high court action and I've thrown him out, yeah, lovely, happy days, I've still got to look after his cat and his stuff for seven days. Yeah, that's a joke. You know, it's not like I can charge him storage. He wants the window left open for the cat. Yeah, yeah we'll close it. Which ain't happening. With the eviction complete, Cheers, Nick can change the locks for a second time. Yeah, perfect. Right, Nick. I feel, I feel like this is deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> You've definitely got your property back now. Lovely. Good luck. Cheers, Good luck with you, Joe. You'll get best. it let soon anyway. Thanks, mate. Take Cheers, care, mate. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Nick wants to renovate and redecorate and get his house rented out quickly so he can start bringing some money in. We'll have a new bathroom put in. I'm going to go and see the builder now and get him started straight away. So, good stuff. <laughs> it's good, this private landlord game. <laughs> Hamdi Abdul Qadir is heading back to court. Six weeks ago, her case to have a family who have been living in her property for over a year evicted was adjourned. They claim they're legitimate tenants, while Hamdi says they were simply guests who refused to move out. I've got mixed feelings. I'm scared. I'm tired. I'm fed up. I just want to have my house back, that's it, you know. I'm tired of all this drama. I really hate to keep coming back to court because it's taken a lot of my time, a lot of my energy. I've got a tiny baby with me constantly that I have to also think of, it's not just me. Hamdi is effectively homeless and has been staying in a room in her mum's house for close to a year. I hope to get my house back today. I really hope I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. Everything is riding on this court case. An hour and a half later, the hearing is over. <laughs> Hamdi has won back possession. But she needs to wait for at least another 14 days for the couple to leave. And it may take much longer if she has to send the bailiffs in. It's not just waiting for another three, four weeks for the bailiff. It's what is he going to do after that? That's what is bothering me. And then the fact that the, you know, the law is giving him power. Why is that? Why, why, why is that? Like, I don't get it. Can I just get into someone's house, just change the locks, lock them out, and then have the right to stay there, rent free, and I'm paying for everything. I don't get it. today, now. I don't want to wait another couple of more months. Do I have to be two years out? Ugh. It's going to be like the second year that I'm homeless. Like two years. I don't want it to be two years. One year and a half is enough.
Six weeks ago, housing officer Ozzy Albayrak investigated a dangerously overcrowded property in Harrow. With up to 12 people squeezed into two rooms and some serious health and safety flaws, Ozzy was worried. The property was crammed, it was lacking basic hygiene, it was lacking everything, it was absolutely horrendous. Since her last visit, the landlord, Ibrahim Talasik, has applied for an HMO licence and claims to have reduced the number of people living there. Today, Ozzy is on her way to meet him and his nephew, Ethan. Miss Albarak from Harrow Council, you're you Ethan. I'm good, how are you? Not bad, thank you. This is basically a letter to say I'm inspecting today. The good news is the property is no longer overcrowded and some of the beds have been dismantled. So they just put that up there. So we got uh, an, a bedroom here. And fewer tenants means they are now safer. Because of the language barrier that we're having with the tenants, they probably don't even understand the significance of this, that their lives might be at risk. The landlord, Ibrahim, claims that he had no idea about any alleged subtenants. But for Ozzy, that's no excuse. Ultimately, the landlord is legally responsible. No. Well, we, thought, we thought they were guests or something. If you were checking, you would know. No, no, no. There was like four or five people in one room, uh -huh. four or five people in another we room. They were, guests. they were packed. Ozzy needs to check the property to see what work has been carried out. I can see you put the smoke detectors mains wired. But there's a lot more to be done. You've got some broken tiles on there, which needs to change. See, the door is ugh, really dirty door. You guys need to put a fire door here, OK? I'm still not satisfied. The property is lacking basic hygiene. This rope is holding this rail, which might fall at any time. I've told you what you guys need to do in order to make this property safer. So you guys need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. You need to make sure your tenants are safe yeah. because they could die here. We're doing that anyway. And you'll be responsible because why you guys are the landlord, so you'll be responsible if anything happens to these people. All right, thank you very much for today helping me. Satisfied that the property is no longer being sublet, Ozzy has agreed to grant a licence as long as Ibrahim carries out all the work to make it safe. Thank you very much. I will come back within two weeks to check all the works are done. OK? Thank you very much. OK, see you later. Bye-bye now. Right, let's go and knock on the door now and wake them up. Yeah. Coming up... Hello. Can we break in? It's all hands on deck for Hamdi to get back into her home. If anyone's in there, mate, this shower. Abdul Qadir has been battling to get her home back for almost a year and a half. Today, two weeks after winning back possession of her home, she's finally evicting her tenants. I feel very optimistic. I feel very excited because today is the day that I can get my flat back, hopefully. Because her tenants have successfully stayed in her home for over a year without paying any rent, she suspects they won't go quietly. I'm very nervous because I don't know what to expect. You know, is he going to be aggressive? Is he going to refuse? I don't know. I don't know what to expect, so I'm nervous. I hope that he's in so that I can confront him. Hamdi has accelerated the eviction process and hired High Court Sheriff Scott. Morning. Good morning, Scott. Hi. Are they still in the property? Yeah, yes, they're still they in the property. Yeah. Yesterday okay. I went to the house. I just passed and I saw the lights on. He'll definitely be leaving today, whether it takes 10 minutes or two hours. But he will, he will be leaving. Oh, so that's we'll good. We'll get that sorted, OK? Right, let's go and knock on the door now and wake them up. Yeah. 
when we knock on the door, if you want to just stay a little way back and I'll explain to them who I am and what's happening, okay. just, just in case they're not too pleased to see us. OK. There's no answer. Hello? They could let themselves in, but it's not going to be that simple. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Can we break in? Yeah, we'll get in. The locksmith assesses the problem and decides there's only one way in. If anyone's in there, mate, this shout. <laughs> Really? I think so. Perfect. Finally, they're in. The tenants appear to have left. They go. Yeah. Oh god. The flat may be empty, but it's not in good condition. Oh my god, look how they left my toilet. everywhere. The whole house is full of moulds. But much worse, the flat is emptier than Hamdi was expecting. Where is my clothes? Where is my wardrobe? I have a big wardrobe here. <laughs> this is really, really, really bad. I had this big uh, uh, stuff that I usually exercise on. It costed me £600, it's gone. My big flat screen TV is gone. Like, they just took my big wardrobe, that costed me nearly £1,000, it's gone. Oh. It sucks. It really does. For Hamdi, this final insult proves too much for her to take. I'm sure there is nice people out there. You know, that would have appreciated if I helped them. But because of him, I would not put myself in that position again. I wouldn't. I would never. I wouldn't. Oh. Come on, sign just there where I put my little cross. But her home is finally back in her hands. Albeit not in the state she had hoped. It's all done. Please you got it back. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank okay. you very See much for your help. Bye bye. At least I've got my house back. Her locksmith secures the place. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. I've got my keys. Changed the locks. Quite happy with that. At least I've got my power back. After a year and a half of living with her baby in her mum's spare bedroom. Finally, she can be reunited with her husband and move back into her flat. I feel I can breathe again. I feel relieved, stress-free, and now I, I just need to focus on how to get the house cleaned up and move on with my life. Got a nightmare tenant, or have you been at the mercy of a slum landlord? If you've got a story to tell, head to channel5.com/slash nightmare tenants for more information on how you could be considered for the show.